In the early 2000s, Toyota had lost its reputation as a performance car company as the Mark IV Supra lagged in sales and they ultimately canceled it. So in 2012, when the Toyota 8.6, known here as the Scion FRS, was introduced, it signaled a return to enthusiast cars for the first time in over a decade. Now, for 2022, Toyota is introducing the second generation of its entry-level sports car. For 2022, Toyota has introduced a new generation, and this is it. This is the GR86, and it's now under the GR brand. In the last 10 years or so, this car has become very popular with the track community, with the modding community, with the aftermarket community, and the fact that they are now releasing a brand new updated version is pretty significant, especially if you like affordable sports cars and you like to go to the track like me. I've only got a very limited amount of time with this car today, so you're just gonna get my initial impressions. We're gonna talk about the features and specs. I'm gonna take it out on track, and I'm gonna talk about the things that are updated in this car and what Toyota has been working on for the last couple of years. Now, the biggest complaint about the previous generation 8.6 was the engine. It has the famous torque dip. When you're driving and you're up around, let's say 4,000 RPM, there's really not much torque there at all. It's pretty flat and the old engine made only 205 horsepower and about 156 pound-feet of torque. Toyota has addressed this with a brand new engine. This is now 20% bigger. This is a 2.4 liter engine and it makes 228 horsepower and 184 pound-feet of torque. And significantly, the torque has moved way down into the rev band. You now get maximum torque at 3,700 RPM. So this should be a lot more pleasing to drive on track because when you're exiting a corner, you should be able to get pretty much all the torque available as you are uh, putting the power down, exiting the corner. They call this engine part of the D4S family. This has port injection and also direct injection. The direct injection is happening pretty much all of the time, but the port injection occurs under light load and under medium throttle load. It helps with fuel efficiency. It's also gonna heap the uh, valves a little bit cleaner too. Now there is no turbo. Unfortunately for people that want a turbo, you should probably go and buy perhaps something like a WRX. This is of course shared with the same platform as the BRZ. So all of the hardware components in here, all the main stuff is about the same. So we just talked about the engine. There's some other significant things in here too. Now there's two transmissions you can get with this car. Fortunately, it still comes with a manual. Yes, save the manuals. And it comes with a revised six speed automatic. I'm gonna have a chance to drive both of them today. And believe me, I'm so, so happy that manufacturers are still offering a manual transmission. Toyota expects that the take rate on this for the manual is gonna be starting at maybe 30% and dipping down a little bit over the years. Right now, over the last generations, it's about 70, 30 automatic to manual. In terms of fuel efficiency, it's about two to three miles per gallon worse in the manual than the previous generation car, and the automatic is about one to two better. Toyota still considers this very much a car for purists. This is a real sports car, so for people who are weekend warriors who like to go to the track, but it's not a full on track car either. This is still very comfortable, very easy to drive on the street and Toyota has done a lot of refinement to this vehicle. This is the second generation of this car, but the chassis is still fundamentally the same. This is not riding on the TNGA architecture that most of the Toyota lineup is on. This architecture is specific to this vehicle and the Subaru BRZ, which is pretty cool. So of course this is rear wheel drive only. And for this new generation, they have done some strengthening to basically improve the ride quality and make the car a little bit stiffer. So up front, it has new cross members between the front uh, suspension and the frame. This reduces lateral bending. And the previous generation was already pretty stiff and I can tell you it's pretty good. When you've got a stiffer chassis, it allows the suspension to work better. You can tune the shocks and the springs to be a little bit softer and still provide the same amount of performance because you've got less body flex. So it is quite a bit stiffer. Uh, the hood has an internal diagonal frame structure and in the back, pretty significant. They've done a lot of work back there. They have added additional strength by something they call a full ring structure. So it ties the upper part of the chassis and the lower part of the chassis together. They're using a lot of high strength steel on this car and they're also using structural bonding too. So this is a bonding material that not only keeps the car quieter, but it is also structural. So it adds to rigidity and stiffness on the chassis. And Toyota has also focused really, really heavily on keeping the weight 
down. So this is only about 77 pounds heavier than the outgoing generation and considering it has more power and it is stiffer, in my mind that's, uh, that's a pretty good accomplishment. So the manual now weighs 2,811 pounds. The automatic transmission is about 40 pounds more. So it's up just a little bit. Dimensionally, this is pretty much exactly the same as it was before. It's very similar in size. It's one inch longer. The wheelbase is just a hair longer. It's 0.2 inches longer. It is 0.4 inches lower. And the rear track has been widened just a little bit to give it a little bit more stability in the rear. The front rear balance is 5347, so it's very balanced. It's very close to that 50-50 kind of neutral uh, thing that BMW has going on. Very low center of gravity, and right now in the sports car market, to have a car come in at under 3,000 pounds, especially at this price point, this car starts at a little bit under $30,000 for the base. We don't have any more specifics on pricing. That's, that's pretty good. Now the brakes are still the same size. They're 11.6 in the front, 11.4 in the rear. Now the steering has been updated. The EPS is now column mounted to reduce weight and it's got a new stiffer steering box to supposedly improve feel. So we're gonna see how that works on track. I wasn't overly impressed with the steering feel before in the last one. I'm not a huge fan of electric steering, but hey, that's the world, the, the way the world has been going lately. Uh, it's got a McPherson strut design up front and double wishbone in the rear. And interestingly enough, uh, the BRZ version, they mount the rear uh, anti-sway bar to the body where this, they're actually mounting it directly to the subframe. So this is gonna be tuned a little bit differently than the BRZ. There's two trim level packages right now, two grades they call it. We've got the base, which comes with 17 inch wheels and 215 Michelin Primacy tires. In the premium, we've got 18 inch wheels and tires. They're 10 spoke wheels. They look really good. They're also 215, but they are with Michelin Pilot Sport 4. They're very good street tires. They're very predictable. I really like them. They're easy to drive. So in terms of the design, they've done a little bit of work here to really make this thing look, I think, a lot better even though it's subtle they've done some really nice changes to it here now it's still got the same hard points they call it in the auto industry which means that the strut tower placement is going to be the same so the fender arches though have gotten a little bit more aggressive looking and the rear is a little bit wider this is a simpler looking design it's not as clean or it's rather it's it's cleaner looking than the last version of the H6 and I think in my mind it's definitely cleaner looking than the BRZ version the headlights are LED Everything is kind of LED. The accent light is an L shape, pretty much just like the Supra. It's a lot less busy looking and the grill is quite big. And I'm looking at it and there's a lot of space for things like aftermarket oil coolers, intercoolers, stuff like that. So if you wanna put a big turbo under the hood, there's plenty of space for that. Toyota says they are very friendly to the aftermarket and that is super awesome in today's day and age when it's getting more and more difficult to modify your cars. I'm super glad that Toyota is still making a car that the aftermarket really takes to because this is an important part of this car. This is a big aftermarket car community. I hardly know anybody that drives a stock GT86 or 86 depending on where you come from. Pretty much everybody has modified them either for all kinds of things, for stance, for track like me, all kinds of things. This does have improved aerodynamics and the front vents are functional on this car and they re and actually they flow out the back so they reduce turbulence under the front wheel well and that is supposed to improve stability. It's gonna reduce the high pressure under there and that's gonna keep the car tracking a little bit more straight than I guess without them. The rocker moldings are quite aggressive looking. Now in the premium trim, you get this very prominent duckbill spoiler and the taillights wrap around and overall, I think the whole package just looks a lot better. It's less conservative. I wasn't really a huge fan of the last generation of 8.6 for whatever reason in terms of the styling and design. They've done a lot of subtle changes that to me make this look a lot nicer, a lot more classic, a lot. It's just a better looking design and now it's something that I would really aspire to own. It comes in seven different colors, including one called Track Bread, which is Track B Red. Kind of a clever play on names. Now the interior is significantly updated too. In fact, it has been revised quite heavily. The instrument cluster is now all LED. It does have a seven inch multi-information display in the center. Now depending on what mode you're in, if you're in track mode, it's gonna display a little bit differently. You're going to get a, a tack right up the middle. It's very clear, very easy to ride, read. This is a very driver centric, very driver focused car actually. The heating and ventilation system is updated quite a bit too. You've got 
three quite large round dials with LEDs. The steering wheel is leather. All the touch points are leather, which is kind of nice. So is the e-brake, so is the shifter boot. There's a lot of nice little leather touches here. And on the premium, which this one has, you get leather trim on the sides of the seat, some nice bol bolstering, and you get Alcantara in the middle. The driver side has got eight-way adjustability. The passenger side is six-way adjustability, not power. That's to keep the weight down. I don't mind at all. I find it very driver-centric. It's a very driver-focused car, and Toyota has spent a lot of time really focusing this car and developing it on the track. This is a car for enthusiasts who are looking for an entry-level sports car. Now it's time to drive it on the track. We're going to drive the manual and the automatic. So this is the manual transmission car, and first we're going to talk about the engine, which of course has an increased displacement by 20%. This is now 2.4 liters, and it's supposed to have more torque in the mid-band coming out of corners. Indeed. Let's see. It does. The flat spot that used to be here now gone because now we get the maximum torque much lower at 3700 rpm so this engine is a lot easier to drive on track than the old one which i just drove back to back and this also has the new manual transmission heel and toe very nice pretty good placement for the pedals is a little bit better in terms of the fact that it feels just a little bit more tight. It's got a real good satisfying kind of snick snick feel to it. And what I like about this transmission compared with the cable up operator transmission like in a uh, in a Honda for example is that you're really shifting directly. You're shifting the gears, you're pulling the gears in the transmission, you're moving them directly. There's no cable linkage involved. So that makes it really engaging to drive this manual transmission. Pedal placement is really good for heel toe. It's pretty easy just to bend my uh, heel over it a little bit, blip the throttle. So this is the automatic and I've just got it in automatic mode. I'm going to let it shift itself, see how it does. All right, 
that heel and toe. Brakes are really good. upgrade in my opinion to the previous generation it costs a little bit more money but this car is definitely very significant upgrade I think for this platform okay I don't know the track here we go what a great track by the way thank you Toyota for taking So if you're looking for an affordable entry-level sports car, and even if you just like doing track days, this doesn't need a whole lot. All you need is brakes, some tires, and an alignment, and you're good to go with this car. You can have all the fun that you need right out of the box. I really like this. I'm really having a great time with this. You should definitely check it out if you are interested in getting a car like this. Obviously, the other competition is the Miata. This is a little bit more hardcore, a little bit more track focused, and Toyota has just done an excellent job with updating this car. Everything about it is great. We haven't even talked about the interior in this drive, but these seats in this premium are super supportive. Everything just feels really good. All the touch points are good. It feels very integrated, very well engineered. The 2022 GR Supra is a very worthy addition to the GR brand. Everything about this car has been improved compared to the last generation. The engine is much more drivable. The suspension is more refined. The interior is a huge upgrade. And overall, the package just feels super integrated. And it's great fun to drive. If you're looking for an affordable entry-level sports car, this gets my highest recommendation. My name is Eric. Thanks for watching.